Hello chess lovers, Surin here and in this video I want to share with you an interesting game where we are going to see a fantastic combination. With the white piece is playing Italian chess master Arturo Reggio and German born British chess master Jacques Mises is on the black side. This game was played in 1903 in Monte Carlo. Reggio opened up with e4 to which Mises responded with Sicilian defense, knight f3 e6 d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, knight c6. Four knights variation is on the board, and white captured on c6, entering into the lines of the exchange variation. According to modern theory, knight db5 is the main move, but in the game we see knight takes c6, which can also be seen nowadays even at the top level. e5, knight d5, knight d4, queen c7, f4, f5. Well, nowadays in here the main move is considered to be queen b6, and now if c4 then bishop b4 check, if king e2 then only now black is playing f5. This line can be seen very often, even at the top level, but instead after f4 we see f5 straight away, and the problem with this move is that uh, this is allowing white to weaken black's king side, and then by announcing a check from h5, force black to move his king, king d8, bishop d2, d5, but uh, even uh, after white managed to force black to move his king, uh, it's not that white has a decisive advantage, although on the other hand white of course has a better position, c4, rook b8, queen h4, hitting on f6, bishop e7, bishop c3, queen b6, Bishop e2. Uh, of course, capturing on f6 is not good. Black can either announce a check from e3 or can even play queen a5 and then rook takes b2. If king d1, then even at this point rook takes b2 is winning. If bishop takes e7, then simply king d7 and uh, white king is in a mating net. How are you going to neutralize the threat? Uh, that's why after queen b6, we see bishop e2 answer, although at this point castling queen side is of course better, but in the game we will see that white will completely neglect that fact. King d7, c takes d5, c takes d5, rook d1. Well, it's not quite clear why not castling queen side, and actually it's not dangerous, you know. Uh, this bishop on c3 gives uh, white's queen side a huge solidity. Instead, we see rook d1. Rook g8, queen h3, pinning this pawn, threatening rook takes d5, f5. Well, this is somewhat weakening uh, black's center, especially the dark squares. Instead, uh, bishop b7 is preferable, but in the game we see f5. Rook f1, bishop a6, offering the exchange of light squared bishops in order to somehow weaken. Uh, white king, but instead of going for bishop takes a6, which is actually a good continuation, white made a terrible bishop d3 move. Uh, here is how Soviet chess writer Yakov Damsky comments on this move. A blunder. Uh, bishop takes a6 was correct, but it is hard to attach a question mark. It is revealed only by one of the most brilliant moves in the history of chess. As we have reached the critical position, you can pause the video and try to find black's next moves. Ready? Uh, well, look, right now white king is sandwiched between two rooks, and by relying on that fact, black is pulling out a brilliant combination. Here we go, in here. Jacques Mises played rook g3. Did you manage to find this move? Uh, the whole idea is to block the third rank, or deflect uh, white queen and Announce a checkmate, for example, if h takes g3, then your queen no longer has the control over the third rank and uh, black is managing to announce a checkmate. That's why white accepted the rook sacrifice by capturing on g3 with a queen, but here comes another staggering below, bishop h4. Uh, the logical continuation, uh, black's whole idea is to lure away white queen from the third rank. Bishop takes a6 was white's answer, the only move which allows to prolong the resistance, and uh, white lost the queen. h takes g3, queen takes a6. But it's not yet over because white has a rook and a bishop 
against the queen. Uh, rook h1, hitting on h7, rook g8, rook takes h7, check king c6, rook h6, king b5, rook takes d5, check. Uh, this leads to simplifications and in the endgame white has no chance of surviving. Uh, quite possibly that combination made such a huge psychological effect on Reggio that he quickly started making mistakes one after another. By playing king f2 and protecting the pawn, white could put tough resistance. Instead we see rook takes d5 check, he takes d5, rook takes a6, yes, and in this endgame uh, white has no chance of saving the game, and uh, let's see how Jacques Mises realized the advantage. King c5, king f3, d4, bishop d2, king d5, and now the black rook will penetrate white's camp. Bishop e1, rook c8, g4. White is trying to make use of his kingside pawns, but white is too late. g3, d3, king g5, d2, and at this point we have a resignation. Yes, uh, these pawns are too far from the eighth rank, and on the other hand, black king is too near to the pawns, and white has no way of creating a counterplay, that's why at this point we see a resignation. Well, that was a very beautiful attack by Jacques Mises, and as Damsky said, it was one of the most brilliant moves in the history of chess. Uh, let's take a look at that rook g3 once again, yeah, truly an amazing move, which is easy to miss, you know. Queen takes g3, and there comes bishop h4. Yeah, very, very beautiful. Uh, in the end, a chess puzzle for you where the task is to find the winning line for white. Uh, we have a study-like answer, and quite possibly I should also make a video on this game as well. Anyways, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Feel free to check out my early uploads as well. I will see you in my next video. Take care.